Hey everybody, welcome back to the uh, an introduction to programming with Rust. I'm Joe. This is the fifth or sixth video, something like that. Anyway, uh, this video we're going to be talking about if and if else expressions. Uh, remember, if you remember from the video before last, we talked about expressions, and they are um, a, a, a something in Rust. Uh, a piece of code that returns or that produces a value. Uh, so if and else if statements are that. So before we get into that, let's uh, look at a little something. So I wanted to show you, this is one of my favorite talks. This is like the first time I saw this, like it was before I really even knew Rust very well. Like I was just getting into Rust and uh, I've, I saw this talk and it just, I don't know why it inspired me. Like this Lisa, I don't know, she's just, I like, I think she's really cool and she had a really interesting talk. Lisa Passing, she's from the Ukraine. She's got so she's got a little bit of an accent, but it's only a 23 minute video, but uh um she just makes these like she made this like cool little game and it just it inspired me so much. Let me see if I can find a screenshot of the game here. She showed, yeah. It's just this like kind of cheesemo little game where you drop apples out of a window based on like some experience she had in life. She explains it in the video, but um, I don't know, just, it was just really inspiring me and wanted to pass it on to you guys. Um, so that's Lisa Passing, Making a Game in Rust. You can find it on YouTube. Just search Lisa Passing Rust, and I think it's, the, it's typically the top result. All right, let's get into some uh, conditional logic. So conditional logic is basically it's how computers make a decision. Uh, so... Um, Here's some conditional logic. So let's say we want to, uh, and we'll do this in our program actually. We'll ask the user uh, what currency, and then they can, so, okay, and the user can say choose one for US or two for UK, something like that. And um, so one's going to be dollars and one's going to be pounds, right? So here's what conditional logic is. It's deciding based on which one of multiple options is chosen, we do different things. Like, for instance, if the user chooses US, then we put a dollar sign. Or else if the user chooses UK, then we put a pound sign, which is, I can't remember how to do that now. I did know at one point, it's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't, uh, how did I do that? Oh, I know what it was. Alt and then three on the keyboard. So it's like the hashtag, but which is also known as pound. So it's the alternate pound. So, um, so yeah, those are the, basically, um, so that's how conditional logic works. It's like making decisions with a computer, making choices. One form of conditional logic is the if statement, which is what we're going to use in this video. And uh, along with the if, actually it's not a statement, it's an expression because it produces a value um, or it produces an outcome. You know, uh, um, One thing that goes along with that is else if. And I think the best way to to, to show you that or to, to teach you about that is just to jump right in. So let's do it. We are, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna prompt the user, what country? So we're gonna say, what country are you in? And um, based on what they choose, we will put, and you know, just for for the sake of kind of saving some time or not, not going too crazy, we'll just do US and UK. Oh, well, I did wanna show you one other thing here. Um, so these are some of the conditional expressions, some of the common ones in Rust. And actually, in, in many programming languages, these are usually the ones that you're going to use most often. And you will use them quite a bit um, in programming. This is, it's, they're, they're a pretty core part of programming. Oops, not etc. Um, so for this is there's lots of different kind of loops but uh actually i don't know if case yeah it must be a rust thing because i have it noted down here so um if we just talked about that when is like it's another way of doing an if statement um while and for those are all loops 
case is like kind of a, an easier way to, of doing an if statement as well. It's like um, uh, if the case is one, then say hi. If the case is two, then say hello. If the case is three, you know, so based on whatever the case is, then that's what you get. So, all right. Let's, let's get into our code. Let me make sure I don't have anything else to cover before we get in here. Okay, yeah, so so let's get in here. So uh, some rules that go along with if expressions, they always start with if, the keyword. So we'll start it right here, if, simple. Uh, and then they're always followed by uh, a condition, like let's say if six is greater than nine, all right? And then if, whatever the condition is after that if, if it is true, then the, whatever code is in the code block gets executed. If it's false, then whatever other code you have, you might say else if, that means, you know, here's another, else if nine is greater than six, we'll say, or we could just say six is less than nine then do that and then we can give it a just a pure else without an else if that'll be if this isn't true and this isn't true then it'll just do this is like a catch-all kind of so uh, if this is true then it'll do whatever code is in here if that's not true then it'll go to the next one and do what's in whatever code you can just keep going with the else ifs you could you know have oops what the heck did i just do you could have multiple uh, else ifs and you know, for you know, for having multiple different conditions, whatever one comes true first, Rust executes the code in the block and then skips the rest. You don't always have to include else. Um, if you know, if you, if it's just going to be like, if none of these are true, then nothing ha done. Don't do anything. Then you can just leave else out. It doesn't matter. And for the conditions, you can use uh, any of the common Rust operators, which we talked about like one of the first videos. You can look them up online. Um, but you know, like not equal or equals, uh, less than, greater than, all that stuff, all that good stuff. Okay, so for our if state, our if expression, let me, we're gonna need a variable. Uh, we want to get the country, right? We need something to hold what the country is. So uh, we'll just hold that in a string. It's the data we're getting from the user. And we need to prompt the user. So we'll do that just like we did here. Just copy that and edit the code a little bit here. Uh, enter one for US or two for UK. So yep, got that. And then we wanna read the data from the user, right? So we gotta get this. This gets pretty, um, yeah, that's pretty standard stuff here. Uh, let's see, we want to put this in country. So then our country will either have a one or a two. And then we're not going to, mm, well, yeah, let's, let's do some parsing here. Uh, so we'll just turn, you know, turn the string into a number. Uh, so that country int, we'll change, make it an integer, just a whole number, no decimals needed because it's just one or two. And uh, one and two are small numbers, so we can just use an eight-bit unsigned integer. That's that'll work just fine. Country. We need to trim it to get rid of any extra spaces that are added by that read line function. And we parse it. That's what does the conversion to from string because it's a string up here. It's going to string. It's going to convert to u8 uh, and then store it in that value. And just to handle the result value that is given. We just do the unwrap, just kind of a necessary thing there with Rust. And then let's get into our if statement. So if, oh, and you don't need those. I did that, I kind of did that wrong, I think, earlier. Like I said, that actually it would be more like that. So well, I'll show you here. If country int, right, that's this, where we're holding our value, if that equals one, then what? Enter one for US. So 
if it equals one, then print line uh, U shows US just to let the user know. And we don't need anything else there. All right, so that's what we want to do if they chose one for now. Uh, else, if country int equals two, here's something you want to watch out for. Um, it's a, it's easy to kind of get. I always run into this in SQL. Uh, it, when I I work in SQL a lot, and um, I always do this. Like it'll be like, so you'll put like if country int equals one, or else if two thinking you know it kind of if you read into english it's kind of like okay if it equals one yeah and if it equals two but you actually have to be really specific and lay that out again like if country int equals one else if country int equals two it's easy to forget that sometimes at least for me so just something to watch out for and you chose uk <clears throat> And then we'll just say, you know, if they entered something else other than one or two, we're just, we'll just give them an error. We're just going to make it simple. Just This is just to demonstrate, you know, not going to get too fancy with handling this kind of stuff. So we'll just say else uh, you chose wrong using default US. So if they give us anything other than one or two, uh, we're just going to, we're just going to use US. And if they give us like a letter, uh, it, this parse is just going to crash and it's just going to crash the program. So, but, and there's lots of ways, there's ways we can handle that. Um, but that's, maybe we'll handle that later, actually. Uh, I think when we do loops, we might go through and just handle that. So, um, but uh, for now, if they, they have to put in a number, otherwise it's just gonna crash. And uh, if they put anything other than a one or two, then you chose wrong using default US. So it just gives them dollar. We'll just set that as a default. Uh, okay, and then we got our discount percent. So now, so now we have this. So our country int is gonna be, you know, we're gonna tell the user, and we need to actually use that country int to decide what we're gonna put here the dollar or the pound. So another if statement, if country, let's move that down a little bit, if country int equals one, or no, let's do if country int equals two, this will be a little more succinct. Print line, and then let's just copy this. Sale price is, and two was pound, right? So. There we go. Else, so basically if it's not two, no matter what else it is, any number, so it's any number, it's just gonna be US. Anything else, just print line this. So now, whatever, based on whatever country the user chooses, um, they will get either a pound signed or a dollar sign. Let's save that and give it a shot here. See if we got anything to debug. It's building. Let's get up. There we go. Let's see. Let's choose two. Enter the discount. 50%, $100, $1,000. So it should be $500. 500 pounds because we chose two. And there it is. Let's do, uh, let's do a couple more runs of this just to do some more demonstrations. So if they enter like F, bam, panic, crash, burn. Cargo run. <clears throat> uh, if they enter one, we should get US, right? So we should get the dollar sign. Uh, let's say 40% off of $100. $60 hairs. All right. So that that's pretty much it. That was pretty quick with the if and else if. So I think, I don't know, how long is this video? I don't know. So I wanted to ask you a question on this video. Um, do you have any Rust projects planned? Uh, just curious, you know, what maybe what your plans are with learning Rust, if you have any projects. And uh, if you do, what are they? Comment them below, if, especially if they're just like fun little things that um, 
that others could try or that you'd want others to know about, definitely share them and we can, you know, see what everybody's plans are and kind of just uh, maybe get some ideas for projects. Like if you're just doing some simple experiment to kind of learn, um, learn Rust better, um, if you share that, maybe others will get some ideas. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be covering loops, which is uh, it's another form of conditional logic. So uh, while is like while country int is not equal to one or country int is not equal to two, then, you know, and then so we keep looping until the user puts either one or two in. So that's that's kind of an example there. So yeah, that's what we'll get into the next video. Thank you for watching. Stick around and uh, hope hope you learn a little bit. Peace out.